What's up, guys? It's your boys, Awoki, back here with another of the Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger video. And you guys know how much I like to find actual facts, the actual professionals that have done this, the law enforcement, the FBI's, um, the forensic teams, and so forth like that, including the morticians, the morticians that have to take it upon themselves to respectfully get the deceased ready for their um, showings and their the, the funerals and so forth like that. But in this case, with how this one was held, we obviously know that it was closed caskets. The girls themselves had to be put in special made caskets and sealed properly because of certain things i don't want to say on here because respectfully these little girls were destroyed by their father as the monster um when he should have been their um savior their protector um and so forth like that and then even shanann herself um it's unfortunate that the Ruseks were not able to view the their loved ones before burying them which is again horrific that they had to go through that whole process to begin with. Now, I found a channel called Kari or Kari, Kari, um the mortician because I want to hear from what they have said. Um there's been discrepancies up in the air on autopsies and and so forth and trying to sit there and um have the defense of Shanann and telling people that she was not drinking alcohol liquor it's because of decomp and people are sitting there saying that oh, she's a she's a bad mom because she had um alcohol in her system it's like oh my gosh i need to find somebody that's a professional that can relay this and mention this and i'm hoping that um she does that in this video um again this is mortician's talk victims of the crime the watts family um again i give every channel the benefit of the doubt until somebody finds out that these channels are doing things shady um, when it comes to, I'm not going to get into it, um, but I would like to definitely look into this channel and see what the morticians say about the Watts family crimes. Uh, before we go any further, because you could do me a solid favor and subscribe to the YouTube channel by hitting that wiper icon down the bottom right, hit that bell icon next to it. So when I do post videos like this one, you guys will get that little ring notification that's Wilkie we'll myself has posted that video. And then again, thank you guys so very much for the love and support that you guys show on this channel every single day. We are so close to 60,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys and all that you do. Also, make sure you guys go to the channel of Kari the Mortician. It's it's either Kari, 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 however you pronounce it, K A R I, Kari, Kari, the Mortician. Her link will be down in the description. If you guys would love to take a look at her channel, um, for some fascination, I don't know if it's because I'm a little bit older, but I've been watching channels that show how the the vaults are made and how the caskets are made and how they they dig the hole and how they um how they set up for the funeral and it's like just very interesting how everything has been created um i have not wanted to get into like the whole mortician thing um i do know that there's certain things i'm not going to give you give you guys a whole mortician study here but there's a lot of things i didn't think happened when you die and watching some mortician channels were definitely i wouldn't say horrifically terrifying on my mind but um yeah, there's things I didn't know about uh, what happens that morticians have to deal with when um, taking care of the the deceased. So with that being said, let's get into this video and see what these morticians talk about with the crime of the Watts family. Let's take a look. And again, this is for educational and entertainment purposes. This is not to be disrespectful in any regards towards the family, Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and baby Nico. So please, in the comments, Keep it professional, keep it positive, no bullying, and no negativity, or it will be removed. So, let's take a look. 
Well, hello, everybody. We are back with Ryan and Brian from Undertaking the Podcast that you can find on any podcast platform for all things funeral related. Hey, hello. guys, welcome. Hey. Hey. And Pleasure I am good to be here. Carrie the Mortician, as always. Carrie. And you can find me all over YouTube with anything funeral related as well. So we are starting. I think I've seen her on some TikToks too. This guy does really looks familiar down below here as well, but looks like they're going to talk morticians together. Starting this video with a new series, we are going to be talking from the mortician and balmer funeral director perspective on some murder and unexplained death cases with some questions that have been presented to me. And I'm bringing them to the guys to bring them in on the conversation since I know that their embalming skills are right up there. Oh, wow. So we are going to talk over some cases I'm sure you've heard of. If you haven't, you're going to want to go Google them. You're going to want to Google regardless, because I'm not going to be showing a lot of the pictures and things that we are looking at behind the scenes, but you need to see, because if I show them in the videos, they're gonna, <laughs> they kind of put the lockdown on my video and I don't want that. So we want you guys to be able to hear the content and hear what we're discussing without getting What's that called when they, you know, lock me down? Um, demonetized. Demonetized. Not demonetized, but, um, you know, they put the thing. Censor me. Censor. Yeah, I don't censored. want to be censored. So. We don't want uh, you to be censored. Yeah. So I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say about these cases. But the first case I am bringing to the guys is the Watts family. This is Shanann, Bella, and Celeste, known as Cece, and Shanann's um, fetal baby, Nico, who were killed by Chris Watts. I hate to even say his name and give him another moment of priority, but um, they were killed out in Colorado. Shanann was pregnant when she was killed, and the little girls were thrown in oil drums. So this was, and still is, huge news netflix has done documentaries i believe it's just been in it's got to be like the top five cases of family annihilators an ongoing press fest with this story but because of that it has been a click on carrie's videos fest because of my embalming a pregnant woman video and my skin slip video because oh these are gosh. two terms that come up a lot within the case and so as when a new Chris Watts thing comes out, a spike in my videos come out. And I finally realized what the correlation was. I'm going to give a quick synopsis to the case for anybody who hasn't heard some of the information. It's horrific. Gets pretty darn dark. Um, but we do need to talk over some of these facts for us to talk over some of what we're going to talk about. Um, so Shanann, Bella, Cece, and Nico they were found on August 16th, 2018 days in oil after. field in Colorado. So the Coloradian, Colorado, Coloradonian, I can't even say the word in the Colorado newspaper, Indian? reports from Chris's testimony. Chris had strangled Shanann at home, drove the girls alive to the oil field with Shanann in the back. They saw him take her body out to the field half-heartedly bury it, then went back, suffocated one of the girls with a blanket, went through her in an oil drum and came back for the second girl, suffocated her as well with a blanket, went through her in the other oil drum. The Daily Mail reported the process of removing the girls' bodies from massive oil drums when they were finally- I couldn't again fathom how those people that had to go into the tanks and retrieve those little girls. What was going through their mind, what was going through afterwards, the therapy that they had to endure. And yet there are people out there that are defending Chris Watts and Nicole. They obviously don't value human life. Finally found began at 5 a.m. on the morning of August 16th and went on for 14 hours with a report that there was members that they noted that 6.45 PM, they finally cleared the scene. They emptied all the oil from two 400 barrel tanks. On it took hours. On the scene, and this is where Chris had worked. That's why he used this site as his 
dump site for these little girls and his wife. Then once they were emptied, um, the men went in with their gear and they removed the bodies of the little girls with skin coming off of them in the process, which is where that skin slip comes in, we'll talk about. The mother and unborn baby brother, Nico, were found in shallow graves. I've sent you pictures of the site. There's no pictures of the bodies, thankfully, Thank on this one. Thank so you can look at those God. pictures if you want. I emailed over to you guys. The report reveals the diameter of the opening of the oil tanks was only eight inches. Well, the girls' autopsy reports that I know of have been locked um, under key for the for 50 years, I do believe. Um I can't remember where I read that, but that their autopsy reports are not going to be able to be looked at until like 50 years. So we got another 44 years to go. I won't be here. I can tell you that right now. I mean, 44 years, I'd be 70 something years old. Um, but just saying, we don't need to look at them regardless anyways, because I would wholeheartedly not want to look at autopsy reports of Bella, Celeste, um, Nico, or Shanann, to say the least. I mean, that's little. That's why he couldn't put Shanann in one of the oil tanks is because that opening was so little. Well, he also wanted to separate Shanann from the girls because he was apparently so upset with her because he couldn't get his own Cajoni, um brass ones up to ask Shanann to communicate, to tell his mom to back off. Um, and so forth like that. So he took the matters into his own hands and was stupid about it and murdered his family because he couldn't communicate. He couldn't tell his mom to back off and wanted to be with a new woman. Now let's talk. Um, I'm going to give a little bit from the autopsy reports, and then we're going to talk about the condition of their bodies and where we would have come in as funeral directors in each of those situations and what we might have done for care for their bodies. Now, Shanann exhibited, and this is all from the autopsy report, she exhibited mild to moderate decomposition. She had been out there for three days. They were murdered on the 13th. They were found on the 16th. She'd been out there um, for three days, exhibited bloating, discoloration, and skin slippage. So Brian, I'm calling on you. Define skin slippage for anybody who doesn't know what that is. Okay, for, uh, for all the human beings watching, we have two layers of skins, the dermis and the epidermis. And uh, during decomposition, uh, the layers, the, the proteins that hold the two layers of skin together start to decompose and it allows for what we call slippage because when you touch when you touch skin of a deceased individual you can very easily slip it right off the top layer of skin so the under layer of the dermis is still there still intact but it's that top layer that can easily slip away so um, this is part of natural decomposition and uh, something that we see as funeral directors a lot so the report goes on to read, this likely represents um, prolapse of the uterus. So they had found her out partially covered by dirt, and they were looking at her genital area in this part. This likely represents prolapse of the uterus due to pregnancy and postmortem artifact. So portions were coming out of her genital area. Adjacent to the probable uterus is a largely degraded portion of tissue that is and um, what that actual kind of situation of her birthing out the baby and it's that term coffin birth where a pregnant woman you built up a pressure during decomposition that actually presses out the fetus as if you're birthing it um, because of the pressure that builds up in the stomach in the gastric area and it I don't know how many times I've said this over and over and over. I hope this man rots in prison and rots in hell. I know that's saying a lot on the, I, just hearing about this, it just, it mortifies you every single time. I know viewer discretion is advised and I definitely did make that very apparent in the title and in the description below, 
but just to hear what Chris did, just throwing her away, his unborn son that could have carried on his family Watts name, threw them away like paper, like garbage. And oh my gosh, I just I really wish that everybody that's out there that thinks that Chris deserves to be where he's at just had one hit to him. Just give him one hit. Oh my gosh, there'd be millions of people that would want to do this to him. It looks like a birth. Typically, we don't see this often because someone would be buried, maybe that was unembalmed and it would happen later. But if we get somebody who is deceased that's pregnant and the baby is still inside of her deceased as well, the baby may be removed from the medical examiner or embalmed inside of her still. Have you guys encountered a pregnant woman that you've had to embalm yet? It's it's kind of rare, which is great for every Thank embalmer. God. Yeah, not for me. It's very rare. Awesome. Ne yeah. Never had that. Well, never and I hope that. not. Hey, not that, hey explaining, explaining that coffin birth, that, that is very interesting. Uh, you the know, idea. people makes sense. ask a lot of, about it a lot, which is they think we see it often, I think, but it's not something that's going to happen while in our care because we're embalming mm -hmm. and either the baby's removed or the person's preserved. But when you have this, you know, somebody buried for days, that happens. Um, a lot of people bring up Lacey Peterson, who was killed, thrown in. <laughs> um the water and then they found her baby separate from her but i don't know if that was per se a coffin birth or her body decomposed enough that the baby came out i don't know if it came out vaginally or just stop killing people holy crap i just oh my god or through I, I don't know um there's not enough about that one for me to know for sure but well, for me the reason we don't see this often is because the age of being pregnant is the age of an unnatural death being by Correct. accident or, or, you know, homicide or suicide. Correct. So, um, when that, yeah, that case, there's going to be an investigation and that fetus would be removed during that process. So the opportunities for a coffin birth or even embalming with, uh, a pregnant, um, lady is just not often very, very extremely rare. Thankful for all of us embalmers that that's the case for sure. Um, so, Let's look at kind of just her. She's been out buried three days in the dirt in Colorado. It rained and has a little this bit. This coffin birth, decomposed, skin slip, discoloration, going to have been autopsied. So we've. The autopsy report should be in front of Chris's face at all times. Kind of got this a lot in front of us is kind of a mountain as an embalmer picture yourself going in for that embalming what is aside from that guy's a jerk what are your thoughts kind of going in in terms of what where are you going to attack first to embalm um ryan if i can kind of just set the stage and then let you take off there um you know, the first thing we're going to do when we get someone into our care and into the care center is we're going to clean them. You know, they're going to, you know, come from the medical examiner's office in a body bag or a pouch, generally, you know, most of the time anyway. And so we need to, we need to assess the situation. So we call that the uh, pre-embalming analysis. And that may take a while, but that uh, everything that we're going to be doing, we're gathering information. Now, it's not necessarily verbally depending if we're working by ourselves or with others um, but we're going to need to clean the individual so to gather the most accurate information that we can so that's where we start ryan no i think you're right you can find you can find out an awful lot you know just by giving someone a bath um sometimes you know when we get out on some of these scenes or Bruises, we're in touch with the corner cuts. you know uh, the the immediate thing that's always said is is you you know they're not going to be able to see them or whatever else sometimes we get them back to the the preparation room and start sanitizing cleaning giving them a you know just a full full body torso or bath you find out things may not be as bad as they are too sounds like the, in this situation that's not the case um but you know something to think about you know something that that maybe it doesn't get harped on quite quite enough it's just a bath agreed it can clean off a lot of debris blood things that mask and look make someone look a lot more 
traumatized by the incident than at first glance. I know we've gotten individuals over the course of years and are told by the medical examiner, there's no way they're going to be able to be viewed. They tell the family that and we get them and it's like, you just clean off, clean off the blood, take maybe dust off some dirt and some glass and they're okay aside from needing a little bit of wax and cosmetics. Like you said, that, that bath really unmasks the reality of sometimes of the situation. I, I can say one of the things I'd probably do in that situation too is, is kind of feel around and, and palpate, you know, down the head, down the body and make sure everything is, is there. Um, you know, I think w when it comes to decomposition and being out in the elements, depending on where they were at, they were in a rural area. Um, you know, there are some, uh, I th there's some animal issues that may come into play. I think that has to be taken into consideration. You know, I think you're going to have to step back in this situation and develop a game plan. This isn't something that you're going to necessarily be able to raise vessels and go. It's gonna um, take there's going to have to be a process and a very well thought out process. Now, you're going to probably be dealing with a lot of discoloration, probably some fluid buildup uh, interstitially, probably on the face. Um, I, you know, I don't know. D does it say anything like that? Like, what are some of her, d does it talk about that in the autopsy report? It doesn't. It doesn't give any more specifics Thank really God. about her decomposition and the, yeah. the situation. It doesn't really dive into that. And kind of disclaimer, we don't even know that Shanann was embalmed. We don't know what was done with her. Yeah. This is all kind of just conjecturing about what or we kept might do in such situation with just the verbal information that we have so know that we're not like saying anything happened or didn't happen or anybody did anything wrong we just are talking about what we might do but i think that animal predation yep. and insects are a huge first that we kind of look for in there what were you going to say ryan yep. Brian, it, it comes up a lot, the idea of marbling. Talk about that within this situation. Well, I mean, we're definitely going to, you know, as we clean, we're going to note traumas. We're going to note uh, the, uh, the procedures done by the coroner, but we're also going to note the rate of decomposition. So a lot of these you can, you can see visually like the marbling Ryan, Ryan talks about, and that's uh, just a pattern of, um, stain and when I say stain settling of the blood um, the advancement of bacteria uh, marbling is going to give us an idea of whether uh, for an embalmer tissue gas so the bacteria uh, clostridium profungis is present and that is a uh, it's a very big factor for us so we're gonna we're gonna weigh all of these things that we see and the information that we're gathered as we like Brian said, build this game plan of how we go about embalming. So all of these things that we see, that we smell, and that we feel will provide us information to make decisions on how we go about embalming, how how we go, you know, kind of the, the next steps. And because when, when I want I want to say a couple of things, because when there's decomposition in, in play and skin slip, that doesn't mean we can't embalm, that doesn't mean we can't view. Okay, we, we don't know that until we're finished with our process. And then we may not know that until we've had a, some extra time after the embalming process. But um, all of those, all that information circling around will provide us with the game plan of what type of fluids we use because um, a body that has been deceased for some time, especially with decomposition, has, it, it's risky to the embalmer because it, the, bo the body does not take embalming fluid as, as a regular human being would because the vessels are breaking down and the system is not as intact and complete as we would like it. So were they ev even able to embalm them since they were so decomp or decomped? So what that means is we could have swelling. And I, we've had a lot of questions on the podcast is, you know, why did Uncle John look you know, 50 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. And that could be medical intervention. It could be the embalming too. So there's a lot of different factors when it comes to these outcomes. It's kind of like a highway after a earthquake almost where you have some fractures Analogy. and breakages and you can get pileups essentially as things go and they just build up in certain areas and you don't, you can't see it, you can't control it. But that vasculature is going to essentially melt when the body's decomposing and parts of it are just gone 
um, because it's very soft tissue and it's filled with the warmest thing in your body, which is blood. So it's going to go away pretty quickly when the body's decomposing. Brian, you just look like you were going to say something. Sorry. Oh, no, I got lost in Brian's eyes when he was going on his diatribe. And then my question totally just went down. Go on. But, but there, can I say this? With the, within those situations, friends, I mean, it sounds like in this situation, you've probably got some major trauma. You've probably got, um, you're, you're going to have to worry about wetness uh, with the decomp aspect of things. That's something that, for, you know, to, a, to an embalmer, to a funeral director, to really anybody in funeral service, wetness is a absolute nightmare especially if they're in the caskets um brian and i we've talked about this and carrie i think you've touched on this too the idea of just a drop of water can just soak the inside of a casket the whole thing um, and we, what's that the whole thing like it just spreads like insane you just can't even imagine it's 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 unreal so you know you're gonna have to worry about wetness and discoloration is going to be a big issue probably uh, that you're going to have to deal with odor is something that's going to be very evident. You can tell a lot about odor. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell, honestly, what you can, you can really, I think, identify how bad things are by what it smells okay. like at times. So, you know, it, it is what it is there. That's part of it. That's, that's what it is we do, but yeah. um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think without seeing it, it's going to be hard to treat. You know, another person I'd like to, send this information to and people are gonna there's gonna be people you know who they are possibly that cindy watts when she sat there to her son we don't care what you did listen to what they're telling you about your granddaughters I think and we what can your talk son about did. what we think may uh, right. maybe we, we'd be dealing with just from our past experiences. But yeah. uh, it, either way, it, it's, it would, would not be easy. No. Well, I think, so, I mean, the first part of what we do is preservation. I mean, that's always the key behind everything we're doing, I think, as an embalmer is preserving who is in front of us. And we would probably try to inject very strong fluid and see if it went anywhere. And if it didn't, we would have to embalm from the outside in with fluid packs and with gels and wrapping and then probably a full body plastic suit, which I've talked about those plastic undergarments, you know, if, if there was any viewability per se that we could really do, if we could dry her out enough to have a viewing, at least for the family from a distance, if there was a bad smell even, but um it's hard to say if she was even viewable and identifiable to them at that point, if they could get it, her to that position. What, what I will say is, is it's amazing though, where you think in some of these situations, if you don't try, you know, let me first off by saying this, you've got to at least try. Mm -hmm. um, Brian and I had a situation a few years ago uh, where, you know, we, we had some major decomposition. Um, you know, and, and it was one of those things where we were trying something new, using some new equipment. Um, and it turns out, you know, he was able to at least show the family their loved one. Uh, and it's amazing how what you think you're not, what you don't think is going to happen actually does. Uh, so I, I would say in those situations, if give it, give it a try, you know, I think that's something any embalm or any, anybody that's in education would tell you too, is, is. There's no, no harm in trying to try sometimes. Well, let's talk just for a minute about the fetus. You know, we've, we've dealt with fetuses, baby all of us, Nico. I'm sure, at different gestational stages. The baby uh, Nico was, I believe, 15. I know the medical term is fetus, but I just, I hate the word fetus. I want to call it baby. It's a baby. I don't care if it's 15 weeks. I think a life is a life, and it just... It's upsetting that some people are like, well, oh, it's a triple homicide. It's it's a quadruple homicide. That baby Nico had a heartbeat. It had neurons. It had thoughts. I mean, it was it was starting to come together in this beautiful womb. And Chris was just like, I don't want this baby anymore. I want I want Nicole. Stupid idiot. Oh, Teen I just want to punch weeks him. along, if I can find my notes. Um, 
not very big. And but what do we know? What are Brian? What are babies mostly ninety eight percent made out of? Water. Water. Yeah. It's going to be a little tiny nugget. It's ah, that breaks my heart. Size of yeah. an orange. He's yeah. not very big to start with. He's made almost four weeks in is the heartbeat. I do believe that after nine weeks that the neurons start firing and and so forth. And it's just fully out of just moisture, water, being in her warm womb, which is the first thing to decompose on a pregnant woman is the uterus is the placenta, you know, where that baby is because it's so warm and then being out there for three days. So there's pretty much nothing I would say left of this baby that probably even looks like a baby at that point. So there's really not probably a lot aside from putting the baby in some fluid and you know, I don't know. I couldn't find reports if the baby was buried with her, if Nico was buried with her or not. And there, nothing said anything about there's only three the coffins the funeral or anything. So I couldn't find anything about that. But there was another thing in her autopsy report I want to touch on because I think this is so fascinating and important. So we'll see if you guys have heard about that. So one thing that's also discussed about her report is her blood alcohol level of 0.128 which is well over the drinking legal limit for driving, but she was pregnant. So why was she drunk? Have you guys ever read into this phenomenon? Here we go. Um, I've, I've heard rumblings of it. I have not done much reading on it, but um, my hypothesis would be a byproduct of decomposition. Um, but tell me what you know. I'm curious. Yeah. So I read over the reports that had come out about this because I've heard about this and there was a lot of conjecture about this, about if she had drank at this point and there was this huge report by Thomas Millette, a forensic investigator. And he looked at, okay, if she had drank on the plane because she had come home from a trip, she had got home about 2 a.m. And then the you know murder had happened during the night. And then, so they kind of played out all the hours and where that blood alcohol level would have gone based on if she'd have drank and this and that and the decomposition. And he, he came to find, he said that all of her blood alcohol level was from the fermentation after death synthesis of the alcohol level in her body. So your body creates a natural alcohol level after you die because of the bacteria and the there. yeast that built up in your system. So and stop for those people that are hating on Shanann. It's not alcohol, it's decomp. And that's why her blood alcohol was so high. And he ran every scenario, like the, in, the, the report's long, but it's really interesting to read different hypotheses about it. But he said, I've read, you know, I've run every scenario and this is the one that lands the numbers where they need to be. Because if she would have drank, it would have been up towards 0.17 or higher. It was really interesting. I really had never yeah, delved into anything like out that there. until this case. The spread so, rumors. Yeah, fascinating. I've never heard of that. Yeah, now you know. You don't know what you don't know. I didn't know I needed to know about that until today. That's well, I, knew she, I knew she had gone out with her friends because of that. It's in that documentary. But yeah, I, I wouldn't have ever thought for Yeah, you know, I just wouldn't have thought that. Oh, no. She had tea. No. So let's go over to the girls because this is an area. This is brand new to me as well, some of this. So oh, the boy, girls' what? autopsy reports, essentially a lot of it the same. The bodies exhibited mild postmortem artifact consisting of generalized bloating, areas of marbling, skin discoloration, and skin slippage. During the washing process, the majority of the skin is sloughed from the surface. We talked about skin slip already. Trooper reader grasped, this was reported, trooper reader grasped the upper portion of the first child's right arm then lifted her by both arms as he held her right leg. Trooper Reader held her left arm and left leg as he moved her toward the manway. The victim was then removed out, and as she was, her hand was degloved of its skin. So Ryan, define degloving for me, because this is a term. Oh, I can't. It's nothing I've had we these want cases to again. ever see, but tell us about uh, it. Uh, a degloving. I had. We get these in motorcycle accidents a lot. Mm. Uh, as a paramedic, now um, 
I've had a few cases as, as, as a, a funeral director as well. But what it is is basically the top layer of skin of your hand comes completely off and leaves that second layer of skin there. And it comes off like a glove. So you can hold it up and basically oh put your hand back in it if you want to. It's a, it's a glove. I mean, it's literally a glove of skin that uh, it, it comes right off. So it, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's disgusting. It really is. That's horrible. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. And to think for a child, I mean, it's just it in general, but then to think. But remember, there's people out there that are Team Chris. Of a little, that's just, whew, I try not to think of the context of some of that. Having little girls and I just can't even. Yeah. Um, so not that to skin look was at it, retrieved and given it. to law enforcement. And then the second little girl the report notes during this extraction, there was some, some skin slippage where he had to touch the victim's body. There was also some skin on the plywood where her back had made contact. Um, skin was lost while the body was being moved to the oil pool. So they had made these pools to transfer the children right into because they knew when they found them, they were gonna need to get them right into something and they had created these little pools. There was also skin, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we've got extreme skin slipping on both these little girls. They've also been covered in oil for this whole duration. Then they go for autopsies, then they're moved back to the funeral homes. So we've got this oil component that I've never buried anybody that was in a big thing of oil before, have you guys? Do you know how hard it is to remove oil? It's very hard. And even trying to put water on oil that was in there, sludge, crap, kind of viscosity that was in those tanks. And when you put your hand in there and you try to take it out, you wash it, you wash it off, you still feel it. You wash it, you still feel it. You want, that oil is in your hands for hours, if not days. Um, I worked in the motor pool as a um, all-wheel mechanic in the military. And again, all that oil, it stays. I don't know, and it upsets me very much, if the girls were able to be clean 100% because of this issue. Um, and the degloving, I, I don't even want to get into it because it's, just so grotesque but like they said they don't get to clean many people that are oiled up as what the girls were which thank god that's not a thing but unfortunately it is a thing with these two but it's not repetition or it's not happened in repetition um so let's see what they have to say about this no thankfully no i mean no. that's i think something that there's there's not really precedence on yeah, but what are some first initial thoughts on that? Um, yeah, you're you're gonna do about the same as you're gonna do with you know our first example is you're gonna bring them into your care. You're gonna you're gonna bathe. In a case with oil, though, I imagine you're probably gonna pull out the Dawn dish soap. I mean, that's what they use during the oil spill to clean I up do. animals that were alive. We used a lot of uh, oil blankets, um, oil socks, and so forth like that to retrieve a lot of oil and stop the oil or um to get the oil picked up and so forth like that so again like he said they, they highly subject themselves to um say that they have the best product don dish soap the stuff is cuts through the the oil and gets them clean pretty well so i was thinking about that but i didn't want to say it as well I mean, yeah. it's, ge it's gentle it breaks down oil um, so I think that's, that's the first, my first thought is, as a go-to is, is that, so you got, you got to do some cleaning and then you're going to assess the situation. So, um, yeah. I just feel so bad for those girls and it, even those funeral directors. Yeah. Carrie, let me ask you this within the autopsy, were there any bones that were broken or anything like that? You talked about them going into an eight inch opening. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that they didn't get their collarbone broke. They didn't have their arms, um, What's it called? Um, my goodness, I can't find the word. Um, when their arm pops out of their socket, uh, drawing a blank. I know you guys will tell me in the comments, but I'm surprised none of that happened. They had scrapes on them, it said. Um, 
I mean, they're little girls, so they pretty well fit. Dislocation. They were very small statured. Um, so he fit them in. They had some scrapes and stuff, no break or anything like that um, to speak of. So there was no really other trauma um, aside from the suffocation and, you know, just him holding, I think, that blanket over them and some kind of facial stuff. There really wasn't much else to speak of. So they had their clothing on and, you know, their jammies because he had taken them out of their bed. So, yeah, I'm not going to even think about that part. Um, focused on, on the work, um, which is what we have to do, I feel like, when you go yeah. into that. I can't even imagine these funeral directors. God bless them for... No kidding. I can't imagine having to... Well, anybody that had that to that hold them and handle such them. In a public spotlight, too. Yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm going to hypothesize that being in the oil, submerged in the oil is going being that it's so caustic is increase the likelihood of skin slip all over so yeah. i would imagine that's going to be much worse for the little girls than it would be for their mother mm -hmm. um, being that she was not in the oil but um so that's going to present different challenges to us um, but when it comes to embalming once we have them cleaned up we're still going to assess the situation we need we do need you know temporary preservation we need you know we need tissue to be firm and dry um and in all all cases though the i believe the autopsy is going to help our process as embalmers um all the way through very true. Well, and I know that autopsy report said basically all of their skin had come off during the autopsy because of how Gosh. fragile it was. Um, so, I, yeah, I can't even imagine. I have. And I'm telling you right now, I've seen body parts, explosions, uh, uh, body parts that have been in an explosion. I've had gunshots in, unfortunately, the up here area seeing this areas inside outside i just that stuff didn't bother me as much because i don't know what it was i'm I, i'm not very squeamish but some reason for what they're saying right now i can't handle it i don't know cared for somebody that was in a similar substance uh that they had gone in and very thick and it gets very warm that was something that was a challenge um, when we had them is that it gets really hot in those big drums with a big thick solution in it. Oh yeah, it. I wouldn't doubt and it. And the heat levels decompose them even more rapidly that, that just swells that tissue layers and gets that heat and just, it's just as a hot mess is, oh, and it's yeah. very much an uphill battle that you just don't, Feel like you could win but yeah. so well looking at um two other areas of this i know so with the girls um they reported they had to have a bigger coffin people magazine bad reporting it's a casket people and they had to seal it with a certain wrap so that the gases wouldn't get out so the crude oil being in there for three days they were super flammable the family had asked about cremation and they said they couldn't cremate them because explosion. of the oil. And so they did bury them, but they had to have a full size casket because they had to pack them and wrap them a certain way. I'm not sure because so they're mummified. looking at the caskets, um, Shanann was in a wooden caskets and the little girls were in steel caskets. And I'm going to guess because they could seal possibly to keep in some odors for the girls but i would think that the smell would be the same for both i don't know one of my first thoughts was putting the girls together in a casket because i think we see that when there's accidents with children and parents or you know that you want them i don't know it's that big casket and a little child it would be nice to have them together but if they I never thought possibly about that. left them in their bags or you know wrapped them up accordingly or something that would have taken up more space so maybe they couldn't fit them both because they had three full-size caskets at the funeral wow i i mean we it's it's hard to monday morning quarterback this being that you oh, know, we're not there and see yeah. but um um yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, it's very possible when it comes to the smell and the sealed caskets for uh, the young ones. I would I, I'm, I'm going to guess that it's the smell of the oil. 
Yeah. Um, that maybe it was just, maybe it will, maybe it was absorbed more than we realized. Yeah. Maybe and, it just wash it off. And maybe it couldn't just be washed off. Because uh, when it's I think about in cremation, the pores. Well, what if we cleaned them up? I mean, yeah. That, I, I that situation has never come this way. So. Yeah. And they had to fly know. them. They had to fly them too from Colorado, they were buried back in North Carolina. So that was also part of it is flying them back and the smell and the flammability possibly. I don't know if flammability is a word, but. Well, I mean, if they were too, you know, level too of combustible the to cremate, then it makes me wonder about the airlines. Yeah. So, so, so no something kidding. doesn't just quite add up for me, but again, not being on scene, I don't know. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I I just have to see him to make make yeah. any determination about that because you know I I think right now well yeah why not why not embalm why not try what but I've never had anybody that's been in an oil drum for three days you know in the middle of Colorado. And hopefully you, know, you so never have that what, problem. I don't know what that would look like. Yeah. Now one other key thing that got brought up, which I think a lot of people don't think about, is the logistics of who's in charge. So you have Shania has died, who is the mother to these kids. You've got the father is in jail. So who gets to decide what happens with these little girls? Rusex. You've got two sets of grandparents. Not the father. Yeah, so no. thankful, thankfully in Indiana, it's very clear under Indiana law that if you have been charged with, uh, well, the murder of your next of kin, no, you lose decide. your rights. Yes. You lose your rights, even if you're just charged. So, but it does create an interesting dynamic because in this way it would go equally to uh, both sets of grandparents. Um, Unless they had a will. Yeah. And no, yeah, I hate even, I hate even say normally. Um, ideally, I think you would hope that one set would step back. Um, but yeah, that's well, tough. And that's what happened. Um, Shanann's father, Frank reported, we got permission from, the Watt side of the family to have the grandchildren and to bury our grandchildren with their mother. So everybody, you know, kind of got on the same page and was able to do what was good for the grandkids. Yeah, at but that they, point. the Watts went after some insurance money, which is how we would love to see it. But that you do enter these situations where you do have kind of this thing and then you have grandkids and then you have the basically murderers parents and the, the maybe parent or something's parents and if they don't get along then you have these little girls in limbo in this court battle over who gets possession of them for the burial which is just a sad thing on top of a her they didn't want the grandbabies as much as because they were a part of shenan it's probably why incident so to speak so well summing this one up chris pleaded guilty to their murders and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole and that was for all four because they did charge him in nico's um i don't think it was as murder but some you know fetal to the, the um, detriment of a fetal so he was charged on four charged four for the there so or Termination of a pregnancy, unlawful. Yeah, we know where we are. It's a tough story, Carrie. That's a tough story, man. I tell you, um, I've I've not done the intense research that you have, but Ugh. watching that documentary and seeing the interviews and and it, it was, I mean, it, you know, I've got three little girls, and it just made me want to throw up. You know what I mean? And, and that's the thing is. Uh, <laughs> just it, just what a, a tough situation a mm -hmm. tough story a lot of probably treading softly when it comes to at, uh, being a funeral director there so think about that being in their shoes as well mm -hmm. having to walk those waters i can't imagine sitting with those grandparents and and making those arrangements and and trying to appease everybody there uh, you know, um, and still deal with the, the, the traumatic aspect of it, but also the added stress of what you're doing uh, to provide the service too. It, it just, uh, I'm sure, golly, I don't, I couldn't imagine, couldn't imagine. Well, and knowing, you know, it's not just caring for them, but you also have this circus of media going on around you, which if you've dealt with the media at all as a funeral director, it can just I be could, overwhelming on its own. I could imagine the, the amount of people that are trying to get a glimpse or get a get a quote from one of these morticians that 
took uh, or the, the mortician that took on Bella, Celeste, Nico, and um, Shanann. Um, I couldn't imagine them trying to bribe them and so forth like that. It's just what people want to find is sometimes disgusting. Own with the phone calls and the knocks and the people trying to, you know, low man on the totem pole at the news station that day. Hey, go over and knock on their door and see if you can get anything today and then go tomorrow. And, um, and then the dad being, you know, arrested and that happened. I can't even like, God bless them. That's just the worst. I can't even imagine. Thankfully we don't, all see that during the course of our careers, hopefully. So it did not happen at all. Well, this sums up our first edition of Simon Bomer's talking about murders and unexplained deaths and maybe what we would do in some of those situations to care for. I think these morticians did a great job. Um Kari or Carrie, I can't remember how she said it. Um, you did a fantastic job if you ever see this, which I probably highly doubt that you'll see it, but um, they talked about him respectfully. They didn't go into gory talk about him and so forth like that. They gave their two cents, which a big w- part of this video was to put the rumors to bed that Shanann was drinking that night. Her body was in decomp. She was not drinking while pregnant. I don't know why people keep saying that, but from the experts themselves, not the ones that worked on Sh- Shanann, but the ones that know the the data and the information that she was not intoxicated. Um, again, she wasn't stupid. Um, stop saying it. It's done. It's over with. Okay. Um, comment your guys' thoughts a little bit more. If there's any morticians that are watching my videos, please put your two cents in. I've had law enforcement. I've had psychics. I've had psychologists. I've had um, a whole bunch of different aspects um, about this case. I've had a, a retired um, coroner's office um, uh, company come forward and tell me about this and that and stuff so forth that might have been wrong. It's just phenomenal to see how many experts watch my video when it's just my input my reaction and they want to know about it and then then they put their two cents in which i love reading and a a whole bunch of other people love reading in the comments below again keep it respectful keep it positive no disrespecting any um of the deceased the victims and so forth um hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend a great rest of your saturday we'll see you guys in the next video keep it real keep it safe And as always, keep nerding on, and we'll see you guys in the next video.